Hi, this is Kerry with Filmmaker Central, and today we had some nice surprises from Black Magic Design. First off, the release of DaVinci Resolve 16. So, very cool. Final release, no new features. We'll get to that in just a second. But, uh, exciting. A lot of people have been waiting for the release of 16 before making the jump from 15. They want to make sure it's stable. They want to make sure that it's kind of locked down and working well. And it does seem to be, I've been using it since beta one. So very happy with it. And I expect a lot of people are going to start jumping over to 16 right now. Now, along with the release of 16, they did something they've never done before they jumped right into the beta of the next version, not 17, but 16.1. So I'm hoping that this is going to be a new tradition with Blackmagic Design because often they would roll out new features after the final release of a product. And each time these new features came out, most of the time everything would work great, but they're very limited supply of beta testers would sometimes miss things and it would create problems in production. So now having 16.1 beta one uh, allows those people like myself and others who are willing to work with a beta version and help find the bugs before they're released to the public. So instead of having a very small private beta for new releases, this uh, upcoming release of 16.1 now available right now. So if you go to Blackmagic's website, you can download both the 16.0 release or the 16.1 beta, whichever you prefer. Now, there are some workarounds to actually have both of them installed, and I'll get into the, some of those um, in an upcoming video. You can also watch the video on how to have both 15 and 16 right at the same time. It's the same concept, you can have both of them installed, but I kind of recommend you stick to one or the other and 16 has a lot of really cool features in it and 16.1 has some really cool new features and we're going to be not only talking about those today, but we're going to have a series of upcoming videos to dive into those features and show you how to use them. So I'm really looking forward to that. Now we'll get to 16.1 in just a moment, but the other big release I mean, there's some minor releases with some of the other software or some of the other hardware that I don't really deal with, so wasn't too excited about it, but uh, the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema 4K now has a big brother. Now, one of the things that kept me from getting a Blackmagic Pocket Cinema 4K was the fact that it was Micro Four Thirds. I had no glass for Micro Four Thirds. I'm running Sony a7 III as my primary camera, and there's no adapter to go from micro four thirds lenses to the Sony E-mount lenses. And so there was just no way I could use my existing glass with the Pocket 4K. Now, what was announced today? The Blackmagic Pocket Cinema 6K. That's right, full 6K resolution. It's got some really cool specs on it. It can do 6K at, uh, I believe the top resolution was 50 frames per second, and it can go up to 120 frames per second when you get down to 1080. Now, what's very interesting about the Pocket Cinema 6K is that it has a much larger sensor, of course, to support the 6K resolution, and that meant needing bigger glass. So what did they do? They went to an EF mount. The EF mount is what the Canon standard is. And there's a plethora of really good lenses for video in the Canon lineup. What it also means for a Sony users is you can get a Metabones adapter for about $400 and use your Sony E-mount glass on the Pocket 6K Cinema. So, now, the price did go up from the 4K. The 4K price did not move at all, and the new 6K is about $2,400, which is a phenomenal deal for a camera that can shoot native 6K video while uh, using Cinema DNG or ProRes, or I mean, uh, I guess it would be ProRes and 
Blackmagic RAW. So those are really cool things on this new camera. I don't think it can do Cinema DNG. I think they took that, they kept that out on this release. But a 6K camera for the $2,500 price range is insane. Now, you're gonna need very fast media. You're gonna be able to, I mean, it takes a lot. Like a one terabyte of data will only store, I believe it was two hours of footage at full resolution. So you will burn through storage shooting 6K. But hey, at least you can. So if you need that and you want it, it's available. And not only is it coming soon, it's available today. That's right, you can go to B&H, you can go to Adorama, and you can order a Blackmagic Pocket Cinema 6K right now and have it in a few days. That, again, unheard of from Blackmagic Design. So very cool uh, product announcements there. Now let's get into Resolve 16.1. There are a slew of new features. I mean, more than we can get into in one video. Now one, that really has me excited is this. Now, what are you seeing here? You're seeing a second monitor just plugged into a computer, not using a deck link, being able to run the full screen preview on the second screen. People have been dying for something like this, and the only way to do it before was to buy a deck link and hook that up. Well, I've got, I'm all Mac, so get, you know I can't really plug a card in. So there are little nuances that kept me from being able to do full screen preview on the second monitor. Now it's built in. Very, very big. On the cut page are a ton of improvements. Some of them I hope find their way over to the edit page, but right now they're on the cut page. One of them is the boring analyzer. And it's not for tunneling, it's actually for trying to find boring footage. And how does it do that? Well, it analyzes the footage and it will give you, uh, it will show you visually any clips that are more than, by default, 10 seconds long. Because as you know, uh, typically you wanna have your shots down to about four to five seconds per shot. And if you start getting into 10 seconds or more, the footage is probably gonna get boring. Now uh, the flip side of that is it can actually detect uh, probable jump cuts when a clip is too short. Now these parameters are settable, so uh, you can have some fun playing around with that. Now uh, there's also some new face detection uh, soft or algorithms in there, and I, I'd show it to you, but I don't know how. And that's one of the problems with getting into a beta version is learning that there's really cool new features and there's just, you don't know how to use them yet. And so I'll be playing around with that. Now what that's supposed to do, it's supposed to analyze a scene, find a face and be able to crop and recenter so that you can position the person in the frame properly. Uh, so if I'm off center a little bit, boom, it can be able to just put me dead center. So I think that uh, could be an interesting feature for uh, vloggers and things like that, but we'll see. We'll have to play around with that as soon as we figure out how to use it. Now there's a couple other new features in there that I think are very exciting as well. There are a lot of new features that have to do with syncing clips together. And I think if we were to look at DaVinci Resolve as a whole, it's one big, big feature that was problematic for a lot of people was multicam. Uh, a lot of people had problems syncing, a lot of people had just issues getting everything dialed in right, it was kind of hard to find where everything was, and now uh, a lot of new features having to do with syncing clips, how to find the sync clips, how to know what clips are synced, and how to uh, get them adjusted right. So we'll be looking in a lot of that stuff here in upcoming videos as well. But if you do multicam work, this is probably gonna be a big, big addition for you. A Couple other new features that I think are gonna be very useful is the ability to copy and paste transitions. I think that's gonna be a, a really nice addition. There's also a kind of a shortcut way of bringing up a list of transitions, but copying and pasting transitions can be very big. 
if you apply a transition that requires modifications to its length, its duration, whatever parameters you're adjusting, and you wanna use that over and over, it's kind of a pain in the butt. But now being able to copy and paste transitions uh, to different clips, that's gonna be a big, big time saver for some people. Not everyone is gonna use that, but quite a few people use transitions and this could be a big time saver for them. Uh, another really nice addition uh, has to do with the clip adjustment layer. And in uh, the previous version, in, in just the regular 16, all through the betas up to 16.0, you could drop an adjustment layer, and I love the adjustment layer. I'm starting to use it more and more and more. I find it to be very, very useful. But if you need multiple adjustment layers, even just one on top of each other, let alone a bunch of them spread across a timeline, it would get very confusing very, very quickly because they were just called adjustment layer or adjustment clip. So there was just no way to organize them. There was no way to kind of reuse them easily. So with 16.1, two big changes have occurred with the adjustment clip. One is you can name them. Uh, you just go to the inspector and the very first thing is the name. So you can give them names. You know, I could have my coloring adjustment, my vignette adjustment layer. I mean, all, I can just create handfuls of them that I'm going to reuse. Uh, on top of being able to name them, you can also now drag them to the media pool. That makes it way easier to reuse them at different points in your video. So maybe you have something that's got flashbacks that you've got an adjustment layer or adjustment clip that does a black and white uh, look to something and you wanna reuse that over and over, just create it, drop it in the media pool. Next time you need it, drag it over and you are good to go. So that is a very, very cool uh, new feature having to do with the adjustment clip. Now in Fusion, um, there's two, two big things in Fusion right now. And one of them, uh, I'm not quite sure what it's exactly for, or how to use it yet, but we'll get to that one. The second one is OFX plugins now have access to the alpha channel. They can modify that, the alpha channel. So that is huge. Uh, before, OFX plugins just couldn't deal with uh, being able to create transparencies. So now we can. So I'm very excited about that. I've needed that in the past, wasn't able to do it, had to create a lot of workarounds and masking and all kinds of things to make things work right. Now, OFX plugins can have access to the alpha channel. That's really neat. Now there's another new plugin called Stop Motion. Now one can only guess what that is for or how to use it, but I guess we'll be figuring that one out here in the very near future as well. Now there's new improvements in H.264 handling and uh, rendering and uh, things like going to Vimeo and YouTube. So a lot of new things or a lot of enhancements like that that are all packed in. Overall, there's probably 75 new features that are in 16.1. So I'm not gonna spend an hour or two going through them all today. We'll take them chunks at a time as we start working down the list and showing you exactly how to use them. So overall, I'm very, very excited about it. Now, when it comes to audio, there's some big improvements on the Fairlight page. Uh, mostly that the studio version now supports 96 kilohertz and 192 kilohertz audio. Uh, I've never used that, but uh, I guess there's professionals out there who need that, and that's now part of Fairlight. There's uh, a bunch of other changes in Fairlight as well. So I do have the release notes. If you follow the link in the description here, then you can find the entire release notes as well as links to go download it. It's very simple. Go to uh, blackmagic.com slash support and everything is right there. So very easy, but I'll make it even easier by putting links in the description below. So it'll make it easier for you to find. So overall, very excited about 16.0 being released, super excited about 16.1 and a lot of the new features in that. Now, maybe I'm not specifically excited about the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema 6K, but I know a lot of you out there are going to be, and I might be very, very tempted if I ever get my a chance to get my hands on one and see how a, a speed booster or, or Metabones adapter is gonna work with my existing glass 
And if it works really well, boy, it's gonna be tough not to pick one of those guys up because once in a while, you just really want that extra. So could be something I'll be looking at getting down the road. So we'll see how that goes. So thanks for watching everybody. Uh, Black Magic Design, you guys have done a fantastic job on 16 and now 16.1. We're really excited to delve in and start playing around with it. I'm really, really digging the full screen preview. That's huge. So um, thanks for getting that out to us. Really appreciate it. I thank all you viewers out there for watching. Stay tuned for a whole series of videos on 16.1 uh, and we'll start delving into these features and seeing how to use them. Thanks for watching everybody. Like, subscribe, check the bell icon to be notified when there's a new video. I'll catch you later. Bye-bye.